Welcome, I'm Mike, a Googler, a statistician, and I'm passionate about learning and sharing. Today, I'm a friend and I welcome you into my office. This is gonna be a part two video, the first time where we've revisited a recent video and we add some content to it because a user has asked us some questions. Uh, this is related to the O2B notebook. This was uh, using an API to interactively code against and build a model uh, and deploy a model using AutoML. Uh, in that original video, when it came to that middle part there of evaluating the model, uh, we took advantage that AutoML gives us nice visuals in the console, uh, but a user's coming with a question. Let's jump to our Q&A session and look at the one question we have. Hi, Mike. Can I use the API to retrieve evaluation metrics from the trained model? Well, first, the answer. Absolutely yes. And I did not do that in the original video, and we're going to look at it here today. I'm going to share my screen and we're gonna walk through how to do this. Now, first, what do we do the first time? We went to our model after we created it and we clicked into it and we took advantage of these automatically created pieces of information to evaluate the quality of the model. Uh, remember I did things like item counts so that I could see the actual numbers instead of percentages. I'm gonna keep this screen up in this tab. But we're gonna go back to our notebook in the code and we're gonna look at how to get this information from the API and then we'll talk about why one might wanna do that. So in our notebook, I've added this section now and it's been pushed to GitHub so all future users will get to see all this together. Maybe you're watching this video right after the other and you didn't know that this was missing originally. Um, in evaluation, we have this choice uh, with AutoML. We can use the automated information in the console or we can use the API to retrieve that. Uh, this notebook is now gonna use uh, the API to retrieve. Uh, I've put a link in to some more information on doing this. Uh, but first, uh, remember up above, we created our model uh, by running a tabular classification job. Uh, and when it was finished running, we jumped over and we looked at these evaluation metrics. But now let's pretend like we didn't have those. Uh, let's take our model and let's retrieve the resource names. That's that path down to the model in Vertex AI. And I print it out so we can see how it's formed. It's within a Google Cloud project. It has a location, US Central 1. It's a model and it has this unique ID number. Now we're gonna set up a model client. So that's like a client to interact with that model stored in Vertex at that address. Uh, first, let's instantiate our client. We just let it know our API endpoint, which is just the region with this uh, path to the API for Vertex. Then we are going to uh, retrieve an ID for evaluations for that model. So what we do is we take our client and we say, we tell it, we want to list model evaluations uh, for a particular model. And that model is that resource name for this individual model that we created. That's gonna store it in evaluations. And then uh, there could be multiple. So we are going to look at the first iteration of what's returned and get the ID, uh, the name from that iteration. And then we're going to go back to the client and say, get the model evaluations for that first iteration. And let's take information out of it. So this runs really quick. Now, if I wanted to review, I could print that out. It's a giant JSON like blob of all the information. And remember, there's even confidence thresholds. So every 0.01 increment from zero to one, it's gonna have information. Uh, we're going to look at particular pieces of information that were helpful in this model. So like the area under the precision recall curve, I talked a lot about in the previous video. I can retrieve just that part by saying, hey, metrics, give me AUPRC. And I get 0.9996. Now, what did it say in the console before? Uh, I see an area under the precision recall curve curve and it's basically rounded it to one. That's a lot of nines, so it calls it a one. Uh, so if one, I can get a very precise uh, metric value using the API. Um, another thing I might want to do is look at this confusion matrix. I might even be using this to make a you know, decision in my code to continue on to deployment or not. So I might wanna retrieve these numbers and if they pass some bar that I set, 
I could bless it and say, okay, continue on in the code. Uh, the way I would retrieve a confusion matrix would be that same thing, go to get eval metrics, confusion matrix, and now it has rows and columns, so it's shaped a little different. I've cheated and put in the code here that kind of parses that out. Uh, I get the annotation specs, and that will tell me how many levels. So here the model had level one uh, fraud, level zero not fraud, but I might not know that. So I'm gonna just get the length of how many annotation specs there are, and then iterate through each of them. So this is gonna iterate through zero and one. And then I'm gonna give it like a print command with a little text to make it prettier. So the true label equal, go get the first annotation spec. So iterating through, uh, get the display name zero or one and has predicted labels. Get me the list that contain, contains how many were zero, how many were one when predicted. When I run this cell, <clears throat> I see when the true label is zero, it has predicted labels of 28, 366, and four. Let's go back to the console and see what that looked like. So a true label of zero has predicted labels of 28, 366, or four, whether it's a zero or a one, not fraud or fraud. These four are the false positives. They actually aren't fraud, but they've been predicted to be fraud. Uh, I can also see the 1538 gets returned right here as a true label of fraud has predicted labels 15 and 38 for zero, not fraud, 38 fraud. Uh, there's also in the console this idea of looking at slices. So looking at the model at a particular label. When I click those, it gives me the area under the precision recall curve uh, for that. Uh, and for one area into precision recall of 0.811. Uh, there's the ability when you are using the API to also say list model evaluations at a particular slice, so at a particular label. When I run this, it retrieves all of them and I can say, hey, for each slice, so for each label, print out a value. And I picked area under precision recall curve. And when I run that, I see for a label of one fraud, the area under precision recall cur curve is 0 0.8105, which corresponds to what's been rounded off here in the console. Uh, so again, why would we wanna do this? Uh, well, one, for a lot of models, we're in the future of this series, we're gonna look at models where it doesn't automatically create these. We're going to use uh, code to create them. But for an AutoML model, one, it's supposed to make life easier. It's building you a best model. Uh, well, it's also giving you the evaluation metrics of the best that it's returning. Uh, it's great to be able to retrieve this information and evaluate in code because sometimes code is automating things. You might be choosing to add this to a endpoint that's already been deployed from a previous run, but you wanna make sure it beats that previous model. Well, if I can retrie retrieve these metrics, I can then encode, compare them to previous metrics that have been stored. Uh, so that's one really good use case for why you would want to do this with the API. So with that, I, I say, if you've enjoyed this little short addendum, give me some feedback on that. One, hit the like button that says, hey, I like uh, this kind of type of uh, return video and that lets me know to make more of these. Uh, at the same time, if you want to let others know this was helpful, leave a comment below. And if you want to give me feedback on this, head over to GitHub, uh, click the issues button and open it up. Give me feedback on how this was either incorporated in the notebook or showed up in YouTube and we can make it better for future users. I wanna say thank you. As always, let's work together to make the practice of AI and ML more collaborative, accurate and approachable to a wider and more well-connected audience. Have a great day.